Yes, order my steps in your word, dear Lord. And, and I live like you want me to live. I talk like you want me to talk. I walk like you want me to walk. If you just order my steps in your word. We bring you greetings again from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and the Shallow Missionary Baptist Church here in Largo, Florida, where Reverend B. Hobson is serving as our pastor. Uh, we, 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 we greet you in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. And we want to want to uh, go to the throne of grace in prayer before we go any further. Father God, we come, we say thank you. We thank you, Father, because um, your grace and because of your mercy. We thank you, Father, because of your Son, whom you have given, that we might have a right to approach your throne. Thank you, Father, for your saving grace. We thank you, Father, for Jesus Christ laying down his life that we might have everlasting life. We say thank you, Father. We thank you for the blood that he shed out on Calvary's hill for the remission of our sin. For your word teaches us that Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. So we say thank you, Father. Thank you, Father, because he was bruised for our iniquity and wounded for our transgression. Took the punishment that we so dearly deserved. And we just want to say thank you, Father, for your amazing grace and forgiveness of our sin. Now, today as we Come if you find anything that's unpleasing in your sight in our lives. We pray that you would move it, oh God, for so that it won't condemn us now in the days to come. And then, Lord, as we try to share your word, uh, we ask that you give us clarity. Help us to communicate what you want to say. Say what you want said and do what you want done. Have your way. We commit ourselves and our time, this time to you. Thank you, Father, for being the doctor for the sick and and and, and, and shut in. We thank you, Father, for being joy for us while we were in sorrow, for sheltering us from the mighty storms, Father. We say thank you. And then, Lord, uh, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O oh Lord, my strength and and my Redeemer. We welcome you again to the Shallow Missionary Baptist Church Midweek Cafe. And we call it the Midweek Cafe because we know that your word teaches that man should not live by bread alone. So we say thank you, Father, for allowing us to eat from heaven's table. Now, O oh God, we pray that you would let us down into your stores of wisdom and knowledge. Help us to rightly divide your word. For your word is bread for the hungry soul. So we give you honor and reverence today, and we praise your holy name for all that you have done for us and is doing for us. Thank you, Father, for taking care of my mom, even though she can't walk, she's married, but she says she's not in any pain. So we thank you, oh God, for taking care of her. We thank you, Father, for the caretakers of her daughters that are able to look after her. So we say thank you, Father. Thank you for the church. And the church body, the family there, Shiloh Missionary Baptist Church, and the church everywhere. 
Amen. We want to read to you to you a few verses of God's word that we will attempt to share with you this afternoon. Looking at James, the first chapter, verse 21 through 25 from the New King James Version, and you find these words. Therefore, lay aside all filthiness and overflow of wickedness and receive with meekness the implanted word of God, which is able to give, save your souls. Verse 22, but be doers of the word and not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man observing his natural face in a mirror. For he observes himself, goes away, and immediately forget what kind of man he was. Verse 25, but he who looks into the mere perfect law of liberty and continue in it, and is not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This one will be blessed in what he does. Amen? He will be blessed in what he does. In other words, James telling us today that to not just be hearers, but be doers of the word. And then he, he, he tells us to put aside all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness, one version read, and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save your souls. Yeah, so we want to talk to you today from this text. James, first chapter, verses 21 through 25. And we want to talk about the implanted word of God. The implanted word of God. Several observations can be made about the Word of God from this passage. And the first pertains to what the Word is able to do in our lives. Yeah, I, I like the song, it says, All of my steps in your way, dear Lord. And, and, and we don't have the rights to that music, but uh, we thank God for allowing the artists to record it. Amen. So we want to look first of all <laughs> what the word is able to do in our life. You do know the word in the beginning was the word and the word was God. So in other words, when you read God's word, you're reading reading God. Yeah. The first thing we want to look at is the power of the Word of God. The one, the power of the Word of God. Hey, notice the words of James himself, which is able to save your souls in the 21st verse. Yeah, yeah, the word of God is able to save your souls. Not only that, but uh, he stated clear, very clearly the words of God has the power to save our souls. Yeah, there's that, that power in the word of God. To see how Let's consider some other verses. 
Yeah, let us consider First Peter. Verses 22 through 25. So since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the spirit in sincere love of the brethren, love one another firmly with a pure heart. And having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible through the word of God. Yeah, it, it is the word of God that have brought us to salvation. Yeah, it, it is the word of God which have allowed us to be born again. In James 1 and 18, you find these words, of his own will he bought us forth by the word of truth, that he might be a kind of first fruit of his creatures. Yeah, that, that we might be a kind of first fruit of his creatures. He did this by the word of God. So 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 we, we, we can say like the choir says, order our steps in your way. James says to us himself that he able to save your souls. You know, not only that, but he's stating very clearly the word of God has the power to save our souls. He make it very clear. Notice the words of James' father. Then we look to see how he saves our soul. Let us consider some other scriptures and looking at how he saves our soul. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, we see that power in the word of God. Is power to save is found in its ability to create a new. Yeah. Its power to save is found in his ability to create a new. Yeah, for example, to, to call us to be born again. Yeah, First Peter 22 through 25. Yeah, it causes us to be born again. Since you have purified your souls in obeying the truth, Through the spirit and sincere love of the brethren, love one another firmly with a pure heart, having been born again, not of corruptible seed, but incorruptible through the word of God. Yeah, yeah it's a good thing to follow the word of God. The word of God is able to save us. Not only that, but we find in James 1 and 18, of his own will, he brought us forth by the word of truth that we might be a kind of first fruit of his creature. Not only that, but in, 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 in because this is because of what the word of God contains. God's way of salvation through Jesus Christ. Yeah. If it had not been for God's word, we wouldn't know the way to salvation. We, we wouldn't know that God loved us so much that he gave us his only begotten son, 
if it was not for his word and if yeah yeah we would know that we are saved by faith by grace through faith if it was not for the word of God not only that, but is it able to create a new creature but it what is able to sanctify us. The word sanctified means to set apart for a holy purpose. You know, his word can set us apart for his purpose. David saying of the word's ability to sanctify God's peoples. You know how in Psalms this book of Psalm the seventeenth, the nineteenth chapter verses uh, Psalm nineteen chapter verse seven through Eleven, the law of the Lord is perfect, convincing, converting the soul. The, 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 the testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. The statute of the Lord are right. Rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. The fear of the Lord is clean, enduring forever. Yes, the judgment of the Lord are true and righteous altogether, or to be the light of the they than gold, yes, they much than much fine gold. Sweeter also than honey and the honeycomb. Moreover, then your servant warm is worn keeping them, there is great reward. Yeah, the wages of sin. Yeah, is different. But the gift of God is eternal life through Christ Jesus. And not only that, but we need to know that the Lord's word is God. And then we can count and stand on the word of God. Uh -huh. In his prayer, Zion spoke of sanctifying, of the sanctifying influence of God's word. John 17, verses 15 through 17. He said, I, I do not pray that you should take them out of the world but that you should keep them from the evil one. Verse 16, they are not of the world, just as I am not of the world. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is true. Yeah, he, he prayed that we might, Jesus, Jesus prayed that we might be sanctified set apart for the purpose of God in the world. And that means that if we are in the world, we should not we, we, we should not be acting like the world, but we should be a light to the world. In other words, we ought not to be doing what the world do, but we ought to be following the word of God and what it say do. Thus the word of God can to set us apart for his purpose, not only that, not only that, but 
his words for Kim Preserve. Yeah. The young were told to preserve their ways by the word of God. And in Psalms 119, we found him. The psalm is saying, how can a young man cleanse his way this way? How can a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to God's word. Not only that, but in Psalm 119 and 11, some say, I have heard the word. In my heart, that thou may sin against you. Yeah, the elders were admonished to keep the church pure by the same word. In Acts 20 28 and through 32, therefore take heed to yourselves and to all the flock among which the Holy Spirit has made you overseer. Shepherd the church of God, which he purchased with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departure, savage wolves will come in among you to and not spare. In other words, it will come in to destroy you. So, but observe your hearts and mind the word of God. When we take the time to consider the power of the word of God, it becomes evidence that the word is very important to the Christian life. Yeah, if you if you only read your Bible on Sunday, you choose your Wednesday whenever you have it. Then you are kind of malnutrition when it comes to the word of God. We need to realize that we need the word of God every day. The value of the imprinted word can only we realize when certain conditions are met, we find those conditions mentioned in our text. Yeah, 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 the value, but the value of the implanted word. We find those conditions. In our, in our text, only when we uh, try to meet these conditions, there are some things we must lay aside. Verse 21, James 1 and 21a. James mentioned that such things as filthiness, overflow of wickedness. All description of the of things to the left side, you can find in Colossians 3, verses 5 to 9. Therefore, put to death your members which are the earth, fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil, desire, and covetousness which is adultery. Because of these things, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience, in which you yourself once walked in them. When you was in the world, you once walked in them. For the word of God to bear his, his fruit in our lives, 
the weeds of sin must first be uprooted. We, we, we cannot hope to benefit from our study of the word if we continue to dwell on that which is spiritually filthy and to engage in wickedness. Could it be why many are not much? Could it be why many do not get much out of Bible study or service? Yeah. But I was talking about the, the, the doxology and the benediction. And he talked about between the benediction. And between the doxology and the benediction. And, and I thought about the pastor of Scripture as he was preaching. They said the folks sat down and eat and rose up to play. Yeah, they, they, they heard God's word and instead of trying to do God's word, they got up and forgot all about his word and rose up to play. Yeah, we, we, we cannot hope to benefit from our study or hearing preaching of God's word if we continue to dwell on that which is spiritually filthy and to engage in wickedness. Could this be why many do not get any more toward closer to God or growing more toward spiritual maturity? It's because they are still dealing in filthiness and in wickedness. Yeah. As it was said Sunday, and I've said many times that the world is like it is because the church is like it is. We must not only be hearers of the word, but we must be doers of the word. And I, you know, some people think they can get away with wickedness and evilness, but you can't fool God none of the time. He know your thoughts are far off. In other words, he know them before they get to you. He know what you would do if you could do it. So let's not try to play games with God. Let's be real and honest with him. And then many times we, we need to just turn to him and say, Lord, help me to run this race. I believe in Hebrews tells us to lay aside every weight in the sin that does so easily beset us. You know, and, and sometimes people don't want to hear the word of God when you're telling them the truth. But in order to be what God wants to be, we must be healed of the word of God. We must have a proper attitude when we hear the word of God. James said in our text, James says to receive with meekness the word of God. A full and receptive attitude is essential to get the most out of the word of God. It helps to remain humble if we remember two things. Yeah, yeah. Two things that we need to remember is A, we are sinners too. And B, we can be easily deceived also. We should study not, not to learn facts, not to win debates, but to learn God's truth to save ourselves and those around us. In this prayer of David, and make this prayer of David our own. Open thy mind eyes 
that I may behold the wondrous things thy law. Psalms 119, verse 18. The word must be implanted in my heart. <clears throat> yeah, you know, it, it's all right to, good to have a Bible on the table in your house. You would carry around one in your pocket. But it, it, it's better to have it implanted in our hearts. It is only the implanted word which can truly save our souls. Therefore, we must be sure to take the word out of the off the pages and implant them into our hearts. Otherwise, we are no different from the Jews who gave lip service to the words written on stones. Not only that, a distinguishing future of those under the new covenant is the, the word of God to be written in their hearts. Hebrew 8. Verses 6-13. Where is the word of God today? Is it only in ink inscribed on paper? We have read it often enough. Have we read it often enough? Meditated upon it enough? That God become it become implanted in our hearts as well. It is possible without daily. Is it possible without daily meditating and studying and reading the Bible? No one. It must be found in our lives. We, 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 we must be doers of the word and not hearers only. We must be doers of the word and not readers only. Whatever, whenever we deceive ourselves and usually only ourselves, God is not deceived, nor is the devil. Most likely, sure is see through us. And so will many others see through us. Somebody said, you can fool some of the people, some of the time, but none of the people all the time. Notice that the blessedness of the word comes not by looking into the perfect law of liberty alone, but by continuing in it. Have mercy, Lord. And not only that, but being a doer of the work. Yes, it is not just the reading of the word which provides joy and peace and happiness, but the actual application of the word in lives through faithful obedience. Yes, I'm so glad today that I heard the word of God and I found out that I can prove that you can create a new person. And knowing that, but he's able to sanctify your soul and then preserve you. It preserves true freedom, liberation from 
the guilt and dominion of sin. Uh -huh. Of course, what gives the word this power is the message it contains. The gospel of Jesus Christ, God's power unto salvation. Undoubtedly, we have heard it, but hearing it is not enough. You must lay aside all filterness and overflow of wickedness. Yes, in other words, to believe in God's word. Yeah, John 3 and 16 tells us, For God so loved the world, that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Yeah, you must also be doers of the word. For example, to obey his command to be baptized. For Jesus is the author of eternal salvation. To those who obey him, Hebrew 5 and 9. And in addition to the command to believe and repent, he calls us to be baptized. So we not we, we can't just be healed only, but we must be doers of his word. And then we can sing as the choir sang, Lord of my steps in your word. Receive the meekness with meekness. These words Jesus said to his apostle. For that is how the word of God is able to save your soul. And I tell folks today that there's power. In the word of God, if you look around everything you can see in all of that that you can't see was put there by the word of God. So you need to not just be hearers of the word or readers of the word, but let's be doers of the word. You can tell him, Lord, order my steps in your way. Father God, we do thank you for your word today. We pray, oh God, that it would help somebody to find the fulfillment in life that only they can get by following you and doing what you say. You know, say obedience is better than sacrifice, but we must know what, to, they must know what to obey. Lord, help them to be vessels for you, Father, that somebody might see you living in them and desire what they have. We thank you, O oh God, for your word, reminding us that we need to have the implanted word in us. We can't do it without it. And then we can be able to sing like these people say, order my steps in your word.
These are my steps in your word. I need to tell you before we shut down that the Bible says that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, he said, Thou shalt be saved. Say, with the heart man believes unto righteousness and with the mouth confession and made unto salvation. So I encourage you to, to accept the Lord as your savior today and lord and savior you know too and 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 this this is where a lot of folks get in trouble they want him to be savior but they don't want him to be lord but he he you need to let him be lord and savior amen amen and then give him a church that is teaching the word of god and give god your time and, and he has created you for a purpose find that purpose and do what the Lord created you to do amen God bless you may have a smile upon you until we meet again Thank you.